one of the things that's funny, me and Pat, uh, Pat Kraft, our athletic director, and Vinnie James, uh, who's our sports supervisor that we work directly with, with Pat, um, I think that's been one of kind of their conversations is about them taking a lot of those things off my plate. I'm not saying specifically NIL, but a lot of things that I've had to spend time on maybe in the past or being the person pounding the drum about a message or the importance of something, them taking a lot of those things off my plate, which has been great. I've actually, Chris Peterson has already showed me a couple things on Twitter of things that Pat has said that maybe in years past I was saying um, that's valuable. So, like you're saying, I can spend as much time as I possibly can on football, scheme, development, recruiting. That's been, that's, that's been something that we've discussed about. But I think your point is a good one. Um, there are more things on a college football coach's plate than ever before. Um, NIL is something that obviously we can only be so much involved with based on the current rules from an NCAA perspective and depending on your state how it's set up um, but you better be aware of it either way however it's set up um, and the transfer portal and, and everything else you, you better be aware you better be attentive you better be doing everything you possibly can to develop your entire roster be able to show your entire roster um, that they're going to have an opportunity and a role either this year or moving forward. It's funny, been a lot of conversations about scheduling, you know, and you talk about scheduling not only for to put your team in the best position to win the Big Ten or to win a national championship, but also a schedule that's going to allow you to get players experience before you get into conference play. And and that has to factor in as well. So it, it impacts everything. Um, but I think your question is a good one. Um, and if you're not careful, you're gonna be spending time on a lot of other things rather than the things that specifically show up on Saturdays. Kind of what I want to get to is we have an athletic director, as you mentioned, that everything has a program coordinator here at the Lee Staff Lounge. But sorry, as college football is changing at the pro level, you know, there's a coach and there's a GM, right? And I'm just sure you have in the D line. We see college football evolve to a point, I don't know that exactly it's a general manager, but that it's someone even more specific in the football program who kind of deals with the whole thing. Stuff. So the coach deals with X's and O's and the health and welfare of my players and everything else is something else. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is if you look maybe five years ago and before, like one of the major concerns probably with athletic directors and presidents and things like that was staff side. That was a big discussion in college football. But then the rules changed in a way that you have no you have no choice but to increase your staff size because if you're, like you look at the summer, if you are spending the time that you should be with your current roster and players, helping them academically, athletically, socially, but then at the same time, you're also having to have high school camps and seven on sevens for the future of your program. And then now we have official visits in the summer and these are all happening pretty much the same weekends. You have no choice but to develop these other groups or entities within your program, whether it's recruiting, whether it's roster management, um, the way the model is evolving, you almost have no choice but to do it that way. Yeah, um, you know that's a, that's a that's a good question. That, that's a that's a fair question. Um, and I would like to say this: that I am a, a huge fan of Kirk's. Um, Obviously, the timing for college football in general, uh, specifically for the Big Ten, uh, was challenging with our season being canceled, with COVID. It was a very unique time for all of us. So some of the things um, that Kirk had to deal with were outside of his control. 
when you're hiring a new offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, and you really don't have a, we had no spring ball, we had no spring ball. Um, right now we have some variation in the rule changes of like OTAs where we're able to meet with and be with our players more than ever. He got none of that. So um, I think that's the best way I could describe some of the challenges and issues that had nothing to do with them. Um, and I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, I was really glad we were in Detroit sometime this year and all kind of and I, I got a chance to see Kirk and, and he walked up and we had a really good conversation. I just got a ton of respect for him as a professional. I got a ton of respect for him as a man and I wish him nothing but the best and success. I can understand why PJ brought it back. He obviously did a great job for them. Uh, I'm gonna be rooting for him and his family every game but one. Um, but I got nothing but great things to say about Kirk and a lot of the, lot of the things that played out were outside of his control. Yeah, so for us, um, our whiteout game has typically been a night game. Um, with the fireworks and the white um, t-shirts and clothing, on the backdrop of the black sky, and, um, it's pretty special. Um, although the 12 o'clock games, if you look at the ratings in the Big Ten, have done unbelievably well, and I think it's been, I think it's been an ingenious approach um, in terms of starting out college football Saturdays with a, front, a prime time game. We did a very simple kind of poll with our fans on social media. We didn't talk about specific games or teams, but we just said, for the whiteout, what's important to you? Night game, afternoon, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Uh, is it the opponent that matters most? So we kind of did this. We mixed it in there with like, what's your favorite thing, the hamburger or the, the, the hot dog at the stadium? We kind of started out with those things to try to act like we cared whether it was a hot dog or not. It was really just setting it up to get to the whiteout question. Um, but the data said that most people won a night game. So we looked at our schedule, the game that we thought had the best chance to be a night game. Um, another game we had seen was probably going to be a 12 o'clock game. That impacted the decision and that's where I was leaning the fans backed that up, and then when Pat came in, I asked him, and right away he was he thought the same thing. So that's why the choice was made. And then the other thing is there's some things from a scheduling perspective in the Big Ten where the way it currently sits is we can't have night games after a certain point on the schedule, so that limits it as well. And then also, if you want all the fans to dress up in white, that becomes more difficult later in the season when people want to wear their hunting gear to stay warm that makes sense so a lot of factors that went into it i think it's also maybe caught people a little bit off guard because the way the schedule fell up to that point it had pretty much rotated between two opponents so it kind of set up an expectation but that's really just kind of how it played out and that's fair I love his energy, I love his passion, I love his competitive drive. Um, it's not at the end all be all that he's a football guy, but the fact that he played football in the Big Ten I think just allows him to have a perspective or a lens uh, on our game, um, on our conference and of Penn State that I think is valuable. Um, I think, again, with me being a football guy and the football coach, there's things that I go to him about or we have discussions about and we're aligned already without him having to convince me and me having to convince him if that makes sense. So I think there's a lot of 
of, from an efficiency standpoint, there's a lot of time that's saved that way. So I think that, that's that been really valuable. And I think the other thing is having somebody as a fighter. Um, and and everybody needs that across every campus and in every, in every aspect. And, um, and again, I, I want this to come off specifically to Pat because total respect for the regime uh, that we had previously, but Pat's fighting some battles that maybe hadn't been fought in the past. Just like the provost is fighting battles that's in the best interest of the university, you know, um, from an academic perspective, and just like the dean of the education school's got to fight their battles. Um, and I think that's been, that's been apparent so far. Like I, I don't know if you were standing here when I said it. Uh, Chris Peterson showing me, you know, some of the tweets that have gone out already. That Pat saying that in years past, I I had to say, uh, and I'm like, good. I'm, well, he made a comment I think about NIL, and he made another comment, yeah, about how Penn State, interesting, has opened nine straight years on the road in the Big Ten. Last year at Wisconsin, this year at Purdue. And that's happened for nine years. Like, I don't know how that's statistically even possible. Um, especially when it's been brought up before. But Pat's pounding that drum. So like in years past, I would feel like I'd have to maybe say some of these things to maybe create some pressure or to create some dialogue that needed to happen, I don't have to. You can come talk to me about the left guard right now. I, I'm jacked about talking about the left guard and having somebody else pound the drum on the importance of NIL. Well, I, I think it obviously allows our focus as a football program to be on the things that you would say are most important. But the challenge is if you're also not fighting for those things, it's hard to sustain your program or build your program because if you're just laser focused on this, but your program is not growing in these other areas, then it's gonna be hard to do that. So that, is extremely, extremely valuable. Um, and the other thing is, I just think when you're coming out saying these things all the time, and you're the one pounding the drum, it also puts you in position to be taking shots that you don't need to be taking. Um, and it also can come off possibly like an excuse. So having somebody else be able to, to drive those messages has is, is been very valuable and I'm very appreciative.